Hello and good evening. It's now 1905 in London. I'm Nikki Scott. And I'm Luke Addison. Uh, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, I'm sure you'll agree we had a great session with Amanda Ellis, uh, the Director of Global Partnerships for Arizona State University's Global Futures Laboratory, which is part of the Julie Ann Wrigley Global Institute of Sustainability. Amanda spoke to us about the incredibly important topic of gender equality and why it is an issue of economy as well as equality. It was a fantastic talk. As always, if you missed it, um, you can catch up on demand along with a total of over 20 events available on the Rotary Great Britain and Ireland YouTube channel. The whole aim of Together Talks is to provide a resource library for anyone to use at any time for a virtual meeting to invite Rotarians and guests into discussion and to inspire action. And tonight we're delighted to introduce you to Rotary International Director, Peter Kyle, who will be talking to us on another important subject, that of peace building and the role that we each can play. Peter is involved with, and has been for many years, with Rotary's peace initiatives and Rotary's historical role as a peace building organization. He's a wealth of information and we're looking forward to hearing um, some of his wisdom to, tonight. Rotary was instrumental in creating the United Nations, or it played a role in that, and still has a strong partnership with the UN today. Um, Peter has had a successful career in law and has been a Rotarian since 1976. So Peter's topic tonight is peace building. It's in our DNA. So without further ado, let's learn a little bit more about Peter through his introductory video. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Peter Kyle. I'm a director of Rotary International, and I'm delighted to be joining you this afternoon. I come from New Zealand. I grew up there, uh, did my studies there, uh, then came to America on a Rotary scholarship some years ago. Uh, I returned to New Zealand, got on with my life, got married and mortgaged, and then was invited to join the World Bank in Washington, DC. So I moved to Washington with my family, um, and was engaged with the World Bank for some 20 years. I retired from the World Bank uh, 10 years ago, and since then I've been actively involved at various levels at Rotary International. I've been particularly involved in alumni activities and Rotary Peace Fellow activities. And I chaired the Rotary Peace Centers Committee for three years. This is the committee that oversees the peace program, selects the scholars. Um, and I've been involved in a number of other peace building initiatives within the Rotary world. Specifically, I served as the Dean of the Rotary Representative Network, which is the committee in Rotary that oversees Rotary's relationships with the United Nations and other international organizations. And now I'm, I serve on the Board of Directors, uh, which is the policy-making entity for Rotary International. And I continue to be actively involved in a range of peace building initiatives, uh, both in my local region and in other parts of the Rotary world. Yeah, that was great. So thank you. So here he is. Come on in from Washington, DC. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, Hi, everybody. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Luke. What a pleasure hey. to be with you this afternoon, this evening. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. All right, Luke. Super. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Peter. Uh, let's get things started uh, and ask you to share with us your Together Talk soapbox, please. Well, thank you. It's, it's great to have a soapbox opportunity. This is the first for me. Uh, so uh, I, I welcome this opportunity. As I mentioned in my introduction, Rotary has been heavily involved in all sorts of peace building activities almost since its inception 115 years ago. After the First World War, the focus of Rotary became very much, how can we prevent another terrible occurrence like that from happening? And in 1921, 100 years ago, Rotary yeah. a resolution calling on Rotarians to promote international understanding, goodwill and peace. And those words, international understanding, goodwill and peace have underlined our entire life ever since then. And they are the foundation of the Rotary Foundation, 
they are enshrined in our official object. And after that, the peace focus on Rotary increased very significantly. In 1918, there were 416 Rotary clubs. Three years later, there were 1,000. In fact, club number 1,000 was the Rotary Club of York. Four years later, we doubled a number. By 1935, we had 4,000 clubs. 1939, we had 5,000 clubs. 150,000 Rotarians all around the world. Rotary had become a massive worldwide organization with a strong focus on peace. As a result of that, we were invited by uh, the uh, officials in the cabinets of Prime Minister Churchill and President Truman to work alongside officials of China, the Soviet Union, the United States and the United Kingdom to begin the process of drafting what would become the Charter of the United Nations. After the Charter was formed, we continued our association with the UN. And we now have a very active Rotary representative network. We have appointed representatives to many of the UN organs and other key international organizations around the world, all of which are concerned with promoting the areas of focus that Rotary has focused on, which include peace and conflict resolution. And in many other areas, we have developed a range of peace building initiatives, the Rotary Peace Center program, the Rotary Action for Peace. We've partnered with peace building NGOs. Truly, peace building is in our DNA. <laughs> what a wonderful trail of, of enormous amount of history in a very short space of time there, Peter. So thank you for making that so succinct. And I'd love to, I think Luke and I would love to explore that a little bit more and, and delve into it. So, you know, you mentioned that we were there as a instrumental role in at the beginning uh, of the formation of the United Nations, which was a hell of a privilege. And currently, of course, the United Nations has the sustainable development goals which are very closely aligned to uh, the work that Rotary does. So could you tell us a little bit more about those alignments? Yes, uh, with pleasure. If I can just add two more quick anecdotes. Yeah. 1940, the Rotary International Convention was held in Havana, Cuba. And at that convention, we adopted a resolution calling amongst other things for respect for human rights. Those respect for human rights had never before entered into the international vocabulary. That became the basis for the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, signed in 1948, perhaps one of the most significant documents signed last century. Two years later, in London, a number of senior Rotarians met. They were concerned about the impact of the Second World War on education, scientific research, cultural norms and monuments. They passed a resolution which led a few years later to the formation of UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. So we have such a close association with the United Nations and it continued. After the Millennium Development Goals were developed in 2000, Rotary's areas of focus align very closely with some of those areas of focus. And when they were replaced by the Sustainable Development Goals in, 19, in 2015, once again, our goals, broad areas of focus, very much are consistent with some of the more detailed SDGs. And we're moving, as we move along each of the areas of focus, I think we'll see even greater alignment moving forward. One more question then, I'll hand it back to you, Luke. So Peter, I think um, that is the, it is wonderful to think how focused the work of Rotary is. And clearly Together Talks is an initiative of Rotary Great Britain and Ireland, but we, we also hope to have others joining us who are non-Rotarians at the moment. And I think just to a wider audience generally, um, it's often common to think of, of peace being the absence of just war or conflict. Um, and therefore it's just way too big a topic to actually come to, to a point where you can believe you can make a difference. So how would you address that specifically to any, any individual who's listening today in terms of how they can contribute to what peace is beyond just the absence of war? Well, Rotary is an enormous organization. Sometimes we tend to think of local clubs meeting locally, um, 
old white-haired men uh, uh, having a weekly lunch or a weekly dinner. Rotary is, is much, much more than that. We have many, many initiatives uh, amongst our 1.2 million members spread across 200 countries and jurisdictions. There are many ways for individual Rotarians to promote peace building, both locally and internationally. As I think we all agree, conflict tends to start in local communities. So we need to devise solutions to those conflicts locally. And what better organization to engage in working on overcoming local conflicts but Rotary. We are a community-based organization with some 36,000 Rotary clubs around the world. And I believe Rotarians have not only the capability, but the responsibility to help to overcome some of the partisan divide and the polarization and the conflicts that exist all around the world. We have the resources, we have the reputation, we have the ability, uh, and we are well placed locally to make a major impact in terms of local community partisan conflicts. I think we sometimes use the term Rotarians as general generally, but we shouldn't. It, we should make sure it's clear that that includes the Rotary Act as well, right, Peter? And oh, and, very much so. And, and, and we are just so delighted uh, that Rotary Act is now a full partner with Rotary. Uh, Rotary actors are becoming engaged in all levels of the organization, leadership levels, uh, and they bring enormous energy, enthusiasm, technological expertise, and the same, the same passion and the same desire for peace uh, as, as other Rotarians. So uh, yes. Rotary actors going forward will be a key uh, component of Rotary's overall contribution to peace building. Right, Luke, over to you. <clears throat> Absolutely. So um, obviously peace itself can be quite a broad spectrum. Um, as you've said before, it can turn into a bit of a semantics game trying to define it. You said that you avoid using the word peace and instead choose the word peace building to define the kind of work that you do. How would you kind of explain peace building to other people and how would you encourage them to get involved with it? Good question, Thank you, Luke. Yes, I think one can debate what is meant by peace uh, never really come to any satisfactory conclusion. It means different things to different people in different cultures and different backgrounds. But I think there's a more universal understanding of the concept of peace building. And that's why I like to think of Rotary as a peace building organization. And there are many ways that Rotary has been involved in peace building. I've mentioned our outreach to the United Nations that's a very considerable uh, component in our overall peace building strategy. We have partnered with uh, seven or eight of the key UN agencies, and we, we meet rep on a regular basis with those agencies, and we're developing programs, collaborations between those organizations and clubs and districts around the world. We've developed the Rotary Peace Center program. We have a Rotary Action Group for Peace, there are, there's a police academy, peace workshops, peace symposia, you name it. There are many ways in which individual Rotarians can engage uh, in a different uh, peace building dimension. Uh, I'm particularly keen on the Rotary Peace Center program. I chaired that committee for three years. That I think is the Rolls Royce of Rotary's uh, educational priorities. Uh, we established this program Early this century, uh, we graduate over 100 students a year. We now have over 1,400 peace fellows around the world. These are the creme de la creme of young peace education uh, experts. And I think uh, long after we've eradicated polio, which is our number one external priority, the Rotary Peace Center program may well become Rotary's most enduring legacy to the rest of the world. Super. Thank you, Peter. We actually had the pleasure of meeting two Peace Fellows uh, last season, um, Lauren and, and Wisdom, one, one fellow from the USA and one from, from Ghana. And it struck us as very interesting that the work that you do specifically within the, the Peace Fellowship Centres, it, it involves doing so much work 
um, and and not really ever seeing the faces or knowing the names of the people that you're helping, which obviously is so much rooted into the, the ethos of, of, of being a Rotarian and a Rotaractor. Um, how, what kind of, what does that make you think about when you know that you've helped so many people that you'll probably never actually see them? Well, you said it very well, Luke. Uh, Rotary reaches out. That's what we do through our Rotary Foundation programs, our global grants, our district grants. We have hundreds of projects at any one point in time all over the world involving international collaborations. So that's, I think that's the key part of what Rotary does. We reach out. We may never get to meet the people who are the beneficiaries of our reaching out. We may never get to see the projects that we support, but still we reach out. And the ripple effect, week after week, year after year, of Rotarians reaching out, providing polio drops, wheelchairs, water wells, scholarships, all manner of humanitarian equipment, brings peace and comfort and security to millions of people around the world. And that's one of the reasons why I'm very proud to be a Rotarian and I'm very grateful to all those uh, in the Rotary world who share that perspective and that desire each year to reach out to those more in need. Peter, thank you. So, you know, I know that you have an enormous passion for the peace centers. And of course, you, you and I and several other people know intimately what that means, but there might be some people out there that would love to know a little bit more about not only where the peace centers are, but the fact that we're still growing and, and what that looks like. So could you embellish that a little bit more, please? Yes, indeed. Well, I think the Rotary Peace Center program, as I said before, is a terrific program. It was started uh, the first intake was in 2002. Rotary partnered with six universities around the world, each of which had a world-renowned reputation for their peace and conflict curriculum. This included University of Bradford in England, University of Queensland in Brisbane, Australia, National Christian University in Tokyo, Japan, the uh, University of Uppsala in Sweden, and Duke University, University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, United States. Subsequently, we developed, uh, th those universities offer a two-year master's program. We then developed a, what is now a one-year professional development certificate program in two centers. The first is in Bangkok, Thailand, at Chulalongkorn University, and the second is opening this month at Makariri University in Uganda, Kampala, Uganda. Uh, each year, each of the master's uh, schools take uh, 100 students, 10 each. Uh, that's, so that's 60 to each of the six uh, master's centers. And the professional development programs are taking 40 each year. Some of the graduates of the program are now holding positions of considerable responsibility in the US State Department, in the United Nations, in the World Bank, in all other parts of the world. As I said before, we have over 1400 graduates doing amazing work in every part of the world, in every sector. Uh, in order to qualify for the program, uh, you have to have a college degree and at least three years post-college experience in a peace related sector. So this is not a program for uh, young people who haven't quite decided what to do in life. So let's go back to university for a few more years. This is for people who are really dedicated to peace building and the quality each year of the applicants. Each year we are amazed by the number we receive. Uh, we go through a very elaborate selection process. It's a very competitive program and we are thrilled with the results so far. Uh, the program is funded by contributions from Rotarians. It's at no cost to clubs or districts. It's a very generous scholarship. It covers all expenses, including a fully paid internship program at the master's level between year one and year two. So we, we have some 
wonderful Peace Fellows. If you have an opportunity to attend uh, a Rotary Club meeting uh, where the, the speaker is a Peace Fellow, I encourage you to do so. You'll be amazed at the caliber of the students that we are now uh, working with as Rotary Peace Fellows. So I, I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, I'll never forget the privilege I had of serving on one of those selection committees at the district level um, and how hard it was to, to discern, you know, between such valid passion and different angles. And actually one of the people I actually did get to interview was Lauren Cafaro, who went to Bradford here in England. And so we, we connected ultimately as well. So, and some of the stories, I know Lauren used a lot about her theatrical background and using theater in, in the role of peace. So could you just tell us an example of one of, the, one of the amazing scholar stories that you've heard that maybe isn't so obvious to everyone and how we, how we work with peace, Peter? Yes, it's interesting. Many of the Peace Fellows come with very varied backgrounds. Uh, I remember we have had several who have a, a journalistic background. They spent some time overseas working uh, for the international uh, cable operator, CNN or MSNBC. We've had a number with a law enforcement background. We've had some from the military. We've had, of course, a fair share of lawyers. We've had a lot of doctors. Uh, we, we've had people in all walks of life. And that I think is one of the great, uh, great, uh, greatest aspects. When the 10 scholars come together for a two year program, this is an incredibly bonding, unifying experience. They all have very rich backgrounds and history uh, in their countries. Uh, some have been actively involved in peace NGOs. Uh, the diversity uh, is I think one of the most attractive features and they develop lifelong friendships. We are developing, dare I say it, an army of Rotary Peace Fellows uh, and each year the army just gets stronger and better and bigger and I think the, the, the Rotary Peace Fellowship program is the world's largest and I venture to suggest the most prestigious graduate peace building scholarship available. Uh, so I encourage those of you who are listening to consider this program. It is competitive, but we are looking for the very best and they have become wonderful ambassadors for their country uh, and for Rotary International. Fantastic, over to you, Luke. Great, thank you, Peter. So yeah, a question from me. Um, it can be quite easy to assume that everyone is on board in supporting initiatives like peace and peace building. However, those of us who work within the peace industry know that it's not as easy as that. And as a, as a young person and a Rotarian um, who's often been very involved with peace and peace building initiatives, sometimes I've been met, I'm sure others have been with um, you know, negative responses, even controversy when you're working on peace projects, whether it may be supporting things like Hiroshima, Black Lives Matter, etc. And given that Rotary is a non-political organization, but so many of these deep rooted peace building issues are in politics, what kind of advice do you give to firstly people who are non-supportive, but secondly to those who want to try and navigate those difficult conversations and still support them? Well, I have to react to difficult conversations uh, and we are doing that increasingly. Rotary adopted a very broad equity, diversity, equity and inclusion statement last year. We are in the process of developing recommendations for Rotary worldwide uh, to encourage and, dis and promote discussion of DEI issues. Uh, we should not shy away from difficult questions. Uh, we are a, a potentially powerful force for good in society. Uh, that doesn't mean that we need to take very political stands on uh, some activities which are very political. Rotary prides itself on being non-political and non-religious, but sometimes the boundary between what is political and what is not political is not very clear, and boundary means different things to different people. So I, I would encourage both non-Rotarians and Rotarians uh, to consider the issues that come before them, and if they engage uh, constructively and meaningful, meaningfully in discussions on topics which are a little bit sensitive, uh, so be it. Uh, 
we need to have the courage of our convictions. We need to be forthright in expressing our views without becoming unduly uh, confrontational in, in what we promote. So true. Wise words, Peter. You know, so often conflict um, comes from just not understanding first, seeking to understand each other. And so much of our work in Rotary is done that, on that at a, at a local level. As you said right at the beginning, conflict starts in our local communities, so the solutions need to start there. Can you talk to us a little bit more about examples of peace building projects that some of our local Rotarians in communities can do right in their own backyards? Right, well, perhaps this is a good opportunity for me to promote uh, an initiative which I'm rolling out in my own part of the world. As a director of Rotary International, I oversee some 70,000 Rotarians, 1,800 Rotary clubs from the north of Pennsylvania down through the east coast of the United States, all of the Caribbean, and three countries in South America. And I've long uh, felt, as I said before, that Rotarians uh, have an ability to uh, promote peace and, and a responsibility to promote, promote peace. Uh, outside of Rotary, my other passion in life has been Outward Bound. And I'm sure there are many in the audience who are familiar with Outward Bound. I did an Outward Bound course uh, in New Zealand when I was 20. I became engaged in the administration of Outward Bound and I rose up through the ranks and eventually I became the chairman of Outward Bound International reporting directly to the patron of Outward Bound at the time, His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh. So I've always wanted to find a way to bring Outward Bound and Rotary together. And early this year, with the help of two wonderful peace fellows, I've done just that. One of the peace fellows is the former chief executive of Outward Bound Peace Building, and the other is the chief executive of New Gen Peace Builders, which is a very active peace building NGO in the United States. And we're developing what we're calling Youth and Peace in Action, engaging 100,000 young community peace builders throughout zones 33 and 34. And the idea is to work with uh, interact clubs. We have hundreds of interact clubs in our part of the world and engage with them and other high school students in a range of community peace building activities. We're getting a lot of uh, exciting uh, feedback. Uh, we've raised quite a lot of money for this initiative. We will be rolling it out on the 1st of July next year. I'm happy to provide more detail after the call. Uh, we're excited. I've been talking with some of my peace building colleagues in the United Kingdom about this and so interested. Uh, so that's one example. And, and there are many examples of peace building initiatives. In England, you have Peace Jam, you have Peace Hubs. Uh, there are a lot of peace uh, and education uh, initiatives all around the world. And I think that's an area where Rotarians are very strong in. We all want peace. We all believe in education. We are a very youth focused organization. So bringing Rotary and peace and youth together to me is just a natural uh, outgrowth of Rotary's, uh, Rotary's 115 year history. And I'm excited about this initiative and the many other similar initiatives all around the Rotary world. Well, Luke has a lot of experience in that field too, don't you, Luke? <laughs> yes, yeah, very involved in Peace Jam as well, have been for the last six years and, and, and Rotary and Peace Jam, as well as the other organizations and initiatives you mentioned, they um, collaborate so well together. They, they, they really do uh, work together well. Um, we have a question sent in here by, uh, by someone who's watching that just says, um, what one action can each of us take personally to help us make our world a more peaceful place? Well, one thing I suggest, Rotary has partnered with two of the world's leading peace-related NGOs. One is Mediators Beyond Borders, very actively involved in mediation, and many Rotary Peace Fellows are members of Mediators Beyond Borders. The second is the Institute for Economics and, and Peace, IEP. This is responsible for the Global Peace Index. They've done a lot of research on the peaceability of nations. And they have developed a program uh, for which anybody can go online. It's a three hour course 
you complete this program, you learn to become a peace, peace builder, you get a certificate to say that you've qualified. And there are many practical suggestions in the course of that program for what you as an individual Rotarian can do in your communities, engaging with uh, law enforcement, engaging with the faith community, engaging with civic leaders. There are many other organizations in all our communities in all parts of the world that have broadly similar objectives. They're wanting to provide food and shelter, uh, environmentally oriented, uh, literacy oriented. All of them have a uh, indirectly or directly a peace objective. And that's where Rotary is so, so good because we have such a broad, we are engaged in so many of these areas of focus and we have the resources to work with communities to make a difference. Uh, so the first step I would suggest is to go online to the uh, program, it's under the Institute for Economics and Peace, and that will provide, as I said, practical suggestions on what you can do individually. Super, and just one last uh, quick one from me, Peter, a bit of a, a personal question for you. Um, as someone who works in the sort of peace world, um, you know, and, looking at the state that the world is in today, it can be quite easy to turn on the news and feel uh, a sense of apathy um, instead of hope um, for peace building itself. Um, how do you kind of, what ways do you find, um, you know, how do you ground yourself when you're feeling a little bit of apathy, when you're thinking, you know, is it even worth doing this at all? You know, how do you, how do you kind of center yourself and what advice would you give to people in those positions? Well, I, I, to, be, to be honest, um, I have such faith in rotor actors and youth generally. Over the last few years, I've had more and more contact with rotor actors uh, in, in both my part of the world and other parts of the world. And I'm in, always enormously impressed with the caliber of the contributions, the events that they arrange. Uh, and I recall myself 40 or 50 years ago being the same age as a rotor actor and being quite ambitious, perhaps a bit naive or perhaps a bit altruistic, but very keen to make a difference. So I, I, I just think uh, the sooner we engage rotor actors in particular, engage them at all levels of leadership in the organization, engage them proactively in collaboration with rotary clubs, uh, I think the future is quite bright. There are a lot of great things happening in Rotary. We, we are about to have our first female president. Uh, that's going to be, that's going to have an amazing impact. We've now introduced environment as an area of focus. Rotary actors have been elevated. Never has there been a more important time for, for Rotary and Rotarians. This is the time uh, that we can make a difference. And although it's very tragic, what has happened as a result of the pandemic, the pandemic has opened up enormous opportunities for connectivity all around the world. Rotarians now uh, have proved very innovative, very creative. We're doing lots of exciting things. So I'm, I'm optimistic about the future. Um, yes, we all read bad reports, uh, but nevertheless, I think uh, the future is still pretty bright. Thank you. Well, it, it may not come as a huge surprise to a lot of people, um, but I too share that enthusiasm, Peter. And, and I feel that this connectivity, this enhanced connectivity that we've discovered, which of course was available to us before the pandemic, but we've now somehow finally harnessed it because sometimes it takes that little bit of uh, extra push to get off our, our normal behavior. Let's talk about the program of inter-country committees and their role in peace building and how much that can now take on a whole new meaning in this virtual environment. Well, that's a great example of the internationality of Rotary. Uh, there are some 300 uh, inter-country committees. The first was a, a committee between France and Germany, started after the war. And we now have USA, Russia, um, all manner of inter-country committees. And that's one of the great things that Rotarians bring to the world. The, the internationality, we have youth exchange, we have scholarships all around the world. Our, our Rotary Foundation is premised on clubs in one part of the world partnering with clubs in another part of the world to do projects. 
So the intercountry committees, I think, are a fabulous example of how Rotarians can meet each other, can share experiences, uh, can develop projects, can develop solutions. It's all part of the, the new interconnectedness that we now have. And it, it, in the last 12 months, I think I've been amazed, and Rotary leaders generally have been amazed, at how many new opportunities this has given. The fact that I'm talking to you today from Washington, D.C., I've given presentations to clubs in Russia, in Hong Kong, in Norway, in Lebanon, in New Zealand. Uh, we're now meeting. It's very easy to meet, very easy to establish relationships. We're doing projects internationally. It's a whole new level of engagement. Uh, so I, as I say, I think uh, the future is very bright for Rotary. And uh, I'm just excited to be where I am at the moment. I would love to be 30 or 40 years younger, but... Um, it is what it is, and I'm enjoying, I'm, I'm enjoying my time in Rotary at this time, and I, I'm sure, Nikki and Luke, you're, you feel the same way. 100%. Um, yeah. I think there's, there's so much choice out there, Peter, isn't there? And I mean, we've yes. talked about peace centres, peace jam, peace symposiums, the Rotary Action Group for Peace, ICCs, there's so many. And, and if peace is ultimately the glue of, of what connects all of our areas of focus, really, because if the basic needs aren't met, then you can't have peace. So how do we, how do we get across this not over fragmenting the work we do and, and coming more to focus the impact we have. What, what is your advice there? Well, that, that, that is a challenge. Um, the board did take a step two years ago. We've appointed a, a Rotary Peace Manager to coordinate uh, the, the various peace initiatives in Rotary. Um, we have command, one committee that raises uh, money for peace activities. We have the committee that oversees the peace centers uh, program. Uh, we have a committee that oversees alumni. And as you said, Nikki, they are a little bit disjointed. And one of the challenges for the board is to provide a more coordinated focus on peace building. It's coming. It's taking time. Uh, there are 1.2 million Rotarians uh, and there are 1.2 million opinions on everything in Rotary. So getting some consensus uh, takes time. But I think we're moving in that direction. Uh, we share uh, common uh, core values, we share a vision, we share a mission statement. Uh, there may be differences in how Rotary is practiced in different parts of the world, but there's much more similarities and, and many more points of, of consensus. Uh, so it's going to take some time to get uh, real coordination in these areas, but in the meantime, we're all moving in the right direction. Absolutely. I know we've got some incredible Rotarians here in Rotary Great Britain Island doing some amazing work on peace. And, and as much as we can to harness that and make sure we're all rowing in the same direction, that's definitely a conversation that we're going to be having. So back to you, Luke. I think you can squeeze in one more question, can you, before we get to the... Sure. OK, so one last, <clears throat> excuse me, one last very important question, Peter. Um, as, a, as a big champion of peace yourself, as someone who I'm sure many people look up to, you must have some of your own peace champions and peace heroes. So who is somebody that you look up to in the world of peace? Um, well, I've had the good fortune to work with a number of um, senior Rotarians who are uh, heavily involved in uh, a range of peace initiatives. Um, one I might mention is Al Jubitz. Uh, he was the founder of the Rotary Action Group for Peace, someone who made a, uh, a lot of money in his industry and decided to deploy his resources uh, to developing a Rotary Peace Initiative. Uh, Steve Killerley is another example. Uh, he is the founder of the Institute for Economics and Peace. He's an Australian based in Sydney. He has been described as the Bill Gates of Australia. Someone else who did very well in the business world and then decided to deploy his considerable resources uh, to researching the economic costs of war. Um, so he's someone I think has made a major impact uh, uh, in the Rotary world. Many of our presidents uh, have 
really had a significant impact on peace initiatives. Uh, Ravi Ravindran from Sri Lanka, heavily involved in peace activities mm. out of the world. Mm. Brilliant. He was Great. involved in bringing out uh, uh, a peace between the warring factions in Sri Lanka civil war some years ago to enable polio drops to be administered. Um, it's a wonderful story. <laughs> many good examples. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Super. So uh, we're very sorry to say, Peter, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. It always goes so quickly. But thank you so much for joining us and sharing such important uh, information on a topic that's very close to all of our hearts. And um, before we let you go, we would like to just ask you to share with us your three key takeaways that you'd like us all to act on. Well, I really do think Americans, uh, should do what they can to promote peace locally, regionally, nationally, internationally. Support the Rotary Peace Centre program. You can be a financial contributor. You can sponsor uh, candidates. You could be a mentor. You can join a peace selection committee. Uh, engage with the Rotary Foundation. All the work of the Rotary Foundation has a peace building dimension. So by contributing to the foundation, either financially or in terms of projects, again, you're making a significant contribution to peace building. And as I said before, the impact of the Rotary Foundation, the impact of what Rotarians do around the world uh, contributes enormously, uh, improving the international humanitarian community. Uh, so I encourage Rotarians to reach out to local communities, through their clubs, reach out to civic leaders. There are many activities in which Rotaries, Rotarians can engage. And you, I think you'll find communities are anxious uh, to work alongside Rotarians as well. Thank you so much, Peter. You've certainly given us so many amazing insights and some thought provoking ideas. So whether we are Rotarians, Rotaractors, or people who guess here tonight for the first time hearing about this important piece of work that we do and want to join and do that with us, which would be fantastic. So thank you for all of that and take care. And we wish you all the very best. And we, we commit to you that you'll have a lot of people supporting your passion. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Peter. you, Nikki. Thank you, Luke. I've enjoyed Thank the you. session and uh, I look forward to working with you. Thank you so Take much. Care. Bye, Peter. Bye-bye. Super. Well, that was really great uh, and we definitely learned a lot. Um, Thank you again to, to Peter. Uh, next time on Together Talks, uh, we're delighted to welcome Jenny Seagrove, actor and founder of Main Chance, which is a rescue centre for horses. Uh, Jenny calls herself an animal champion she also works closely with young people who have mental health issues and helps people understand that we all need to be treated with kindness and consideration. So once again, this is a talk not to be missed. Thanks, Luke. And let us end again by thanking you, our audience, for being with us tonight. And we would like to remind you that tonight's broadcast, along with all of the series one, two and previous ones of three, um, over 20 of them now are available on demand in the Rotary Great Britain and Ireland YouTube page uh, the YouTube channel and we would love you to like subscribe and share so we can spread all this wonderful topic for great conversations so until March 16th then it's good night from me and good night from me <laughs>